All right. Thank you so much for choosing Creative Minds. Um, today we are going to have a lecture on acute appendicitis. And we are going to first of all look at a brief anatomy and physiology of the appendix. We will then look at the different anatomical positions where we can find the appendix. We will look at the functions of the appendix. We will look at the definition of acute appendicitis. We will look at the etiologies, the epidemiological background of appendicitis, the pathogenesis or the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms associated with the condition. We will look at the differential diagnosis as well. We will then look at the investigations, the complications, and its what management. Okay, so now let's begin with the anatomy of the appendix. When you look at the the abdomen, the abdomen is divided into nine regions, right? Um, we have the right hypochondriac region, we have the epigastric region, we have the left hypochondriac region. Then we have the right lumbar region, the umbilical region, we have the left lumbar region. Then we have the right iliac fossa, the hypogastric region, and the left iliac fossa. Here, our concentration is on the right iliac fossa. Okay, so in the abdomen, the smaller intestines or the small intestines are located centrally, whilst the colon or the large intestine is located peripherally. Now, at the right iliac fossa, we have the terminal end of the cecum. At the terminal end of the cecum, we have some structural lines called the tenai coli. There are three. At the terminal end of the cecum, this tenai coli converges at that particular point, which is two centimeters below the ileostica orifex. We have the appendix. Usually, the size of the appendix is about 5 to 10 centimeters, and the size of its lumen is about 1 to 3 millimeters, which is approximately um, like the size of, the, of a mastic. Um, this diagram is trying to summarize the whole thing I have uh, talked about. Um, you see, we have the tenai coli here at the points where they converge. We also see the um, the ilium here and the ileocecal orifex. Two centimeters below the ileocecal orifex to the point where the tenai coli converges is where we have the appendix. Now, what is tenai coli? The tenai coli here we are seeing and then the inner muscular of this colon contracts circumferentially to produce the hostral force. This hostral force, its contraction helps to move food throughout what? The, the colon. And what happens is that when you take an abdominal radiograph, you are going to see this hostral force and hostral lines and the abdominal radiograph, which is going to help you differentiate from, differentiate the colon from what? The small intestine. Okay, so now we know that the large intestine or the colon is located at the peripheries of the abdomen and it also what has hostral force and what? And hostral lines. So when you see it's on abdominal radiograph, it should be easy for us to, what, to identify. Okay, so let's look at the various positions of the appendix. Now, in 64% of the cases, the appendix is located with the cica, in the sense that it's located below and upward to the cecum. We can also have the appendix located at the pelvis region, at the sub region, and we can also have the appendix located anterior or posterior to the ilium. Um, in situations like situs inversus, where the organs that are supposed to be at the right side are rather at the left, and the organs that are supposed to be at the left are at the right. You wouldn't have the appendix located at the right iliac fossa, but rather at the left iliac fossa. It's very important to also know this point because um, in retrocecal appendix, it can happen that the cecum is swollen, and the swollen cecum will, will cover the inflamed appendix. So whenever you try to put pressure at the right iliac fossa or at the location of the appendix where we have the swollen cecum, what happens is that the pressure is being absorbed by what the swollen cecum. So whatever tenderness we are looking for may not be what elicited due to the fact that the swollen cecum is covering what the the inflamed appendix. 
the functions of the appendix is not well understood. Other experts believe that the appendix is a vestigial organ, which means that a person can live a normal life even without the appendix. Other theories suggest other things. For example, some suggest that it is a storehouse for probiotics, like the good bacteria. Others also believe that it helps in rebooting the digestive system after diarrhea and other illnesses. Others believe that it plays an important role during fetal development, like um, helping to produce amines and peptide hormones at the 11th week of gestation to help in hormonal control mechanisms. So as to the specific function of the appendix, that one is not well understood. Now we dive into the main condition, acute appendicitis. And this is a condition in which the appendix becomes inflamed and filled with pus, causing pain. What are some of the things that can cause um, the appendix to become inflamed? We have fecalite stricture, foreign bodies, one where adhesions and kinking. Um, Fecalites in the sense that there could be a fecal component or fecal content that will obstruct the appendicial lumen or obstruct the flow of content from the in and out of the appendicial lumen. And we have um, foreign bodies like undigested food as well, which can also cause obstruction. We have roundworm that can also obstruct the guts or the appendicial lumen and what cancers as well. And others like um, lymphoid hyperplasia. Now, lymphoid follicles are embedded in the gut. Whenever there is viral infections, these follicles get stimulated to produce lymphocytes to help fight against these infections. So what happens is that when there is frequent viral infections of the gut, these lymphoid vesicles become overstimulated. So they, they grow in size and obstruct the appendicial lumen, helping, um, which eventually blocks the flow of what appendicial content. A very brief look into the epidemiological background of acute appendicitis. Um, appendicitis is very common in the white races, the young males and what, those who are on Western diets, like especially the diets that are high in carbohydrate content and fat content and also low in what, fiber concentration. Mostly it affects the individuals within, the 10, within 10 to 20 years of age. So this is the graph showing what I just said, I just explained. Um, when you look at the graph, we, we have um, the higher recordings is between the ages of 5 to 19. So individuals within the ages of 10 to 20 years are what, highly affected by appendicitis. So with the pathogenesis or the pathophysiology of acute appendicitis, we are going to look at it first in a normal healthy person. Now, when you take a normal healthy person, there are secretions from the appendicia mucosa just like other parts of the intestinal lumen. The secreted fluid keeps the tissue moist and also helps to prevent pathogens from getting into the bloodstream. Um, earlier on, we said that the common cause of um, or the common causes of appendicitis come from obstructive origin, as in the obstruction of the appendicial lumen. When obstruction occurs in the appendicial lumen, there are inflammatory secretions, so cytokines, histamines, and what other inflammatory mediators get secreted, and the fluid secreted by the appendicial lumen gets accumulated as well, which increases the pressure in the appendicial lumen. So when this happens, there is blockage to both lymphatic and what venal drainage of what the appendicial lumen. This results in edema of appendicial mucosa, which causes mucosa ulcerations and ischemia as well. Also there is bacterial translocation and these bacteria spread through the submucosa of the appendix, eventually leading to what appendicitis. Symptoms of appendicitis. Now when the appendix is inflamed, um, what happens is that there is intermittent generalized abdominal pains. This pain usually begins from the belly button and eventually radiates to the right iliac fossa. Now what happens is that it's often accompanied by nausea, vomiting, poor feeding, 
fever and chills as well. There is something we call Memphis triad. This triad consists of three symptoms where we have pain, we have vomiting and we have what temperature. So if a patient presents to you with um, pain that begins from the belly button and eventually radiates to the right iliac fossa and there is increased body temperature, there is vomiting as well. At least the least you can do is to suspect what acute appendicitis. If signs in acute appendicitis, there are about 10 signs to test for in acute appendicitis. Here, the first one we are going to look at is the guardian of the abdomen. Now, what happens is that the appendix is inflamed, so you try to palpate at the right iliac fossa to elicit for what? tenderness. Um, as soon as you do that, there is sudden involuntary contraction of the what, abdominal muscles, which turns the abdomen up and what, just to protect the inflamed appendix from feeling the pressure you are applying to it because it is inflamed. And the next sign we are going to look at is tenderness at the McBenny's point. It is known as the blank back sign. So here, the McBenny's point is two to three centimeters from the umbilicus towards the anterior superior iliac spine. So tenderness at this point also indicates what? Inflamed appendix. Tenderness at the McBenny's point also indicates inflamed what? appendix. Now the next sign we, are, we want to look at is the psoas sign or psoas muscle test. What happens is that um, the psoas muscle is a retroperitoneal muscle, meaning it lies in the, in the, it lies in the abdominal, what? abdominal wall. So, in this case, you allow the patient to lie what supine, you flex the knee and flex the hip as well. This causes irritation to what to the psoas muscle and eventually what causes irritation to the inflamed appendix and what the patient try to resist whatever you are, whatever thing you are trying to do. So, um, psoas, when psoas muscle test or psoas test is positive, meaning there is inflamed appendix and is very indicated in or indicative in um, retrocecal appendix, whereby I said that um, in retrocecal appendix, tenderness at the right iliac fossa or tenderness at the McBenny's point may not be elicited because of the what of the pressure that is being absorbed by the the pressure that is being absorbed by the um, swollen cecum that covers the whole what inflamed what appendix. Since it's retrocecal the swollen cecum what can cover it and try to prevent it from what feeling the pressure you are applying at the right iliac fossa during what palpation. You can also test for rough sink sign where you palpate the left iliac fossa and pain will be elicited at the what at the right iliac fossa. Also, we have the Dunphy sign. We have the what Marco sign. Like I said, there are about ten different signs to test for what acute appendicitis. So now let's look at some of the differential diagnosis. You should also what, suspect when you have a case of acute appendicitis. Um, you can suspect perforated peptic ulcer, um, acute cholecystitis, enterocolitis, right acute pyelonephritis, mesenteric ischemia. You have Crohn's disease, acute pancreatitis. You have intestinal obstruction. You can also have aortic aneurysm with leak. Then in children, in children too, you should also suspect what? Merkel's diverticulitis. It's a congenital disorder. And also suspect acute colitis, intussusception, and roundworm colic. In females as well, you have to also suspect ruptured ectopic gestation, ovarian cyst torsion, and what? Sapingo ophritis. Okay, so these are some of the investigations you can request for in acute appendicitis. You can request for your FBC, which eventually are going to have increased um, neutrophil counts, increased WBC counts, uh, or lymphocytosis, where in the case of um, frequent or uh, yes, increased viral infections of the gut, where lymphoid follicles are going to be out, hypertrophied to block the gut. Then you can also do abdominal ultrasound where you are going to see the inflamed what, appendix. Then we can also do upright or what, supine abdominal radiograph, which can be normal. Then what can also be used to rule out what, intestinal obstructions and what, intestinal perforations as well. We can also do the urinalysis to rule out UTI. 
You can also do the beta ECG to rule out early ectopic pregnancy in women of what childbearing or age. You can do the C-reactive protein as well, which indicates inflammation. Okay, so now let's look at some of the scoring systems you can use in diagnosing um, acute appendicitis. Here we have about six of them. We have the Avado scoring system, we have the Calam scoring system, the Zanaskis, the Repasa, the Anderson, and then the Air scoring system. So let's take the Avado scoring system. Let me take the Avado scoring system. Um, Avado combined um, three parameters as in the symptoms, the signs, and the, what, the laboratory values to, what, to make this scoring system. The symptoms here is that you are going to, when you have a case of appendicitis, you, you suspect a case of appendicitis and you want to um, use this current system, you look out for what? pain migration. The person has abdominal pain. Does the abdominal pain migrate? The person, does the person have anorexia? Does the person have nausea or vomiting? Then you also look out for lower quadrant tenderness, the right lower quadrant tenderness, and you look out for rebound tenderness, elevated temperature, laboratory findings such as leukocytosis and what, left shift and what, leukocyte count. If the person scores less than five, meaning it's not, probably not what, appendicitis, then if the person scores between five and what, six, then it can be compactable. It can be that the person is what, suffering from appendicitis or not. If the person scores between six and nine, then it's probably that you know, the appendix is inflamed. If the person scores greater than nine, then the appendix is, appendicitis is what, is really what, confirmed, or the appendix is really inflamed. The Calam scoring system is a modified version of the Avado scoring system where sh shift to left is removed. The Zanaski scoring system has the following parameters. It was developed in 2005. You look out for lower abdominal tenderness and you score the person for, you look out for rebound tenderness, you look out for total WBC count if it's greater than 12,000 per centimeter. You look out for features of what's um, abdominal ultrasonography. The repasa also has 15 parameters. Then Anderson scoring system has what? Eight parameters. Okay, so complications of acute appendicitis. We have peritonitis, ileus, sepsis, anemia, bar of trashing, what? Abdominal or pelvic abscess. Okay, so now we are moving on to the last part of the lecture. Um, management of acute appendicitis. Um, before we, we go into that, we should all know that um, acute appendicitis is a medical and surgical emergency, and its management shouldn't be taken lightly. Okay, so initially, this is what we are going to do. We are going to put the patient on no per us. The reason is that um, the management of acute appendicitis is mostly surgical, though not in all cases. Um, so. Patients going through surgery who go through what's general anesthesia and patients under general anesthesia have a higher risk of aspirating gastric content into the lungs. And if that happens, it's going to make um, breathing, respiration very difficult. Also, we correct dehydration and balance electrolyte levels as well. Then we have to also abort the pain by what's giving analgesia. Then we have to also put the patient on what? Urinary catheter. Then also, our antibiotics has to be given as well to prevent, to reduce um, infection and also prevent peritonitis. Then antiemetics to abort um, vomiting or prevent what vomiting. Also, there is another form of management called interval appendectomy or delayed surgery. Um, this is where patients with acute appendicitis are put on antibiotics for one or two weeks before the surgical procedure will be done or the appendectomy or the surgical removal of the appendix will be done. Um, in this case, this is done to reduce infection or peritonitis and also to help make surgery go on smoothly. All right, this is the end of today's lecture on acute appendicitis. Thank you so much for choosing Creative Minds.